Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make Hessel Audio Style Future Garage. This is definitely one of those tutorials that I wish existed back when I was first starting. This is the style of stuff I actually started out producing. Before I did techno and house and all that, I was just trying to make all this cool skippy garage influence stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys learned something. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, mini, presets, everything from this video is available at the top of the description on my Bandcamp for just $5. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there. And yeah, let's get started. Alright, so we're at 138 BPM. The first thing we have going on here is the kick, which sounds like this. Which obviously when you play this kick on its own, it feels a bit odd because it's just kind of bouncing around so much. But I'll play it with the rest of the percussion because the way this kick works is it's in a group with the bass line. You know, that's what you typically want to do to get that really fat, powerful low end that you're going to need to really make this style work. However, if you just play the kick on its own, you know, it's really not just about that kick. It's about how the kick and the percussion and all that stuff is coming together. So you can hear it's a super, you know, garage, like, UK funky style pattern that's happening here, just like, you know, lots of 16th notes. And yeah, and then the kick, I'll say, is really, it's partially about the programming, but it's also a lot about the type of sound you're going to choose. So here you can hear, we just have this, like, kind of softer kick, you know. It's super big and fat, but it's also a bit deeper. It's not just entirely, like... You know, it's a bit softer still. And then I just have that going through some drum bus. And that's the kick. Then we have the bass line. So the bass line's really simple. We're in the key of F minor. So we just go F up to A sharp, which is the fourth of F, and it's also just five notes up. Then it hangs on that A sharp for one more note, or for one more bar, I should say. And then we do this G sharp here, which is the minor third of F. And then what's happening here at the end, as you can see, we just have this sliding up. So this one is also really simple. You know, it's just putting that note that's an octave up. Over here it goes from an octave up to an octave down like that. And then the other thing is just having it happen on an eighth note. So if you have this happen like there, you're going to get da na 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 If you have it happen there, you get kind of like that there's a little bit more rhythm to it if you put it on an eighth note like that and yeah super simple bass line though you know it's just about getting some nice like long held out notes that are going to create a lot of nice low end in your track now the way i made the sound for this one is actually just using two sine waves i have operator here but you can see there's no fm happening because we have that fm algorithm it's just the oscillators playing side by side here and then this is actually a really simple technique where basically we're just taking these you can hear it's just two sine waves and then they're just detuned a little bit and that's all it is and that's how you create that movement if i play it up high you can really hear it hear how it's kind of like wobbling like that Without, like, actually being so, like, you know, without it being, like, wow, wow, like a dubstep bass or something. It's just a simple sort of wobbly bass, and that's how you create it, because what's happening is basically you're hearing these two oscillators playing, and if they're at the same tuning, you just hear two of the same thing at once, essentially. But when you detune it, what's happening is one of these, this one, is happening a little tiny bit faster than the other one, so you're hearing them together... But that like, it gets even faster when you play it up higher. That's just the second oscillator essentially playing the sine wave slightly faster than the first oscillator. And that's how you get that movement. And it's a really nice way to create these kind of like more deep, savvy bass lines that still have some movement to them. And then what I did there is I just added a bit of this bass amp actually. Which you can hear adds a little bit of crunch on top. That's what the low pass is for. But you can hear it just makes it super fat. You know, I think it's compressing it a little bit. But it's just really like... Making it into this fat, 
powerful, warm bass wave. That's the other thing, is that the bass line needs to not just be big, but it needs to be warm. And almost a little bit... Like, analog like that. But yeah, then that's the bass line. And then on the groove of low end, just have a bit of saturation. So, you can see it's really not that much, because these are already pretty much doing it. You know, their thing on their own. It just gives it that last little bit of glue, because with this style, of course, the low end is really a huge, huge part of it, you know? And if your kick and bass aren't really fitting together, and it doesn't feel like one cohesive unit, you're gonna have a problem there. So here's without this. And then with it, you can hear it's subtle, but it just gives that last push. And then that's the low end. Then we have this vocal. No, no, no. So the way this is made is it's this sample. You know, just kind of like a nice ambient vocal. It's in, it's not in English, it's in, I'm not sure what English, to be honest. But it's, you know, just a little bit obscured. It's more, mostly just about getting the school melody, you know. You want something like a short kind of stab like this that you can take and kind of chop up and make different things with. So what I've done here is I have it just playing through normally there. And then here, all I did is I just took it and then reversed it like that. And then you can see we have a little bit of the tail still. So it's just a reverse vocal over here. But you can hear it creates a new melody out of it because with the effects it's going through and stuff, it's not so obvious, oh, that's just the reverse sample. It kind of just sounds like a different vocal, especially once you hear it all together in the mix. So for effects here, I'll just take everything off and kind of go from the ground up. So the first thing is the bandpass filter without it. And then with it. So you can hear this just kind of takes this, you know, makes it deeper and gets rid of like some of those highs. You know, it kind of helps to obscure it a little bit and make it feel a bit more like that dark, almost like barrier-esque sort of feeling. Then we have a bit of echo and reverb. So these are really important because you want this to be really ambient. You want this to ring out while everything else is kind of like, you know, it's like we have this quick stabby percussion. Quick chords too. So this is that one thing that's just going to be super ambient and held out. So that's what those are doing. Then finally, to tie it all together, we just have a bit of drum bus, which makes it a bit fatter. But this is also a really good way to bring out the reverb and the echo, because it just kind of tends to bring it to a more even level with the main sample, while still letting the main sample breathe. And then finally, we just have a high pass filter, because we don't want anything to get in the way of the kick and bass. And that's it for the vocal. Then we have these dub chords, which it's actually two tracks here. So it's these MIDI chords and then this chord stab to finish it off. Here's what they sound like. So yeah, the idea here is that we're getting some of these chords that are very, you know, tight and controlled. And dubby like this. And then we get this little chord stab. Which is just an audio, which kind of like, you know, adds some texture. Because if you, I think if you just do one or the other, it's kind of flat. But if you combine both, you really get the best of both worlds. So, for the mini chords, these are the actual chords. It doesn't, it's not quite as complicated as it seems. All it really is, is it's just F minor. And then A sharp minor, that's it, which is just following what the bass line's doing. And then what I'm doing here, so this is just a regular F minor. These two are actually A sharp minor 9. And the only thing that's making that into a minor 9 chord rather than just a regular minor is this note. If you look and see the C here, it's the same note down there. I just put it down an octave to get a little bit of variation. But yeah, super simple. We're just adding in that ninth voice. And then it's giving it a bit more character. And then by taking these and having like this one where the C is an octave down and then this one where it's right in the middle, you know, it's just kind of creating more out of just one chord essentially. 
Because those sound like pretty different chords, especially when you hear them in the mix, especially when they're just kind of, you know, ringing out with all this reverb and echo. So, yeah, it's just kind of a nice way to get a bit more mileage out of it. So, for the sound with this one, there's a million different ways that you can make this type of a sound. The way I made it here is just using this pretty simple FM patch, where you can see we have two sine waves here creating like this. Like, almost like a sort of Rhodes type of sound, like an e-piano. And then what's happening is those are going into a low pass filter, which has an envelope on it. So you get that quick, like, plucky kind of deep thing. And then we have an LFO on top of that, or on that filter frequency. So that's just kind of like... Slowly moving it so that you get each chord sounding slightly different. Yeah, it's kind of like morphing. And changing like that now. And yeah, so that's the purpose of that LFO. Then we just have a bit of chorus, and then I have this echo and reverb, which you can see super long and dotted quarter notes. She gave that. And another thing is like how this chord hits on that eighth note on that upbeat there rather than right on the beat. You know, with this echo, all of a sudden you're pushing it to like a different sort of timing because we're getting It's kind of like pushing it into a different place in the beat, which you can hear, you know. So it's like a combination between MIDI programming and effects that's really going to make the, the sound interesting. And the reverbs like that. And then finally, we just have some drum bus. This is pretty important with this one because you want it to actually be, you know, pretty textured, pretty fat sounding. So that's going to go a long way with that. And then finally, we just have a high pass filter. And then for the audio chord stab. So it's just this sampled chord stab, like from an old vinyl record. You know, again, this is just adding some texture and something that isn't going to be like just, you know, a MIDI programmed chord progression. And then for this one, we just have a bit of echo. You can see that's also on ping pong, so it's going back and forth. And we have the reverb turned up a lot on that as well. You know, this one's just super held out, super ambient. You get that like still kind of ringing out into the next part, and that's very much on purpose. Then we just have some drum bus to fatten this up. And then a high pass filter, which is just cutting out the low end. Again, you really want to make sure that there's not going to be anything gaining in the way of the low end in the bass line. And yeah, that's it for the chords. Then we have the percussion. So I'm just going to go down the line here with this. Obviously, there's quite a few layers going on. The first one, and probably the most like upfront one, would be this rim shot. that's that main sort of snare that you're hearing the way this is done is it's, it's pretty simple it's just really like this nice fat rim shot sample I've been going through this really short reverb too to kind of give it like you know make it sound more live and like it's in a room you can see there's also some velocity variation on this one you know all very important to bring it to life so that's the first thing is that rim shot you know that's like Super future garage, super drum and bass even with the sound, you know, it's just like the type of sound that you would use to make this style of like very bassy music when you just want like a nice cracky snare. Then we have the hi-hats. So what's happening is there's this one going, like if I play it with the metronome. And then we're bouncing back and forth between this one and this one. So yeah, it just makes it like very dynamic because if you just have one going, tss, 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 you know, it's kind of different than when you're hearing, like if you're just hearing, tss, 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 that's one thing. But then once you're hearing, tss, 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 you know, it just kind of brings it to life a little bit more to have a few different hi-hats. And another thing you'll notice is that this main one that you're really hearing on the upbeats is the loudest one. And like the biggest sample. These other two are really just in there to create some vibes. So they're a little bit quieter samples. But obviously you can still hear them. 
And then there's finally just this little 808 hi-hat down here, just playing some little... <laughs> then we have, like, the percussion stuff. So we have these bongos and this little tap sound. And then I'll actually keep that snare down there because that's kind of part of that. So we have, like... So those are kind of playing their own little thing, but then if you hear those with the hi-hat... Like, you can see some of these are super quiet in there, but it's all coming together to really, like, create the big picture. And then finally we have this little shaker thing down here, which sounds like this. So that's just doing like a So what it is, is it's the shaker loop that just every single half note just goes And then on every other one I have the shaker Which is just like a one shot and that's layered with a snare So it's like And that's just that last thing that's providing a bit more flow and groove to the overall percussion. So yeah, you see all the layers that go into it. You know, it's not, I won't say it's the easiest thing. You know, you have to know like what's going to happen, but this can give you like some ideas of like how many things you're going to have to make because again, it's not just going to be like, you know, one hi-hat and one percussion and then one like okay rim shot you need like the best rim shot you can find the best hi-hats you can find you need great programming you need everything to be playing together this is all going to come together to make this style i think this style in particular a lot of people think like it just is kind of like oh like i don't have whatever burial sounds or i don't have the sounds that the hessel audio people use to make their beats but it's like it's not just that it's not just because you don't have access to burials magical archive or whatever that may be it's really everything coming together it's like you know just a great rim shot sample playing a great pattern great percussion and it's all going to come together and make a great track and then on the group of this we just have a bit of drum bus so here's without that and with it you can hear just simple way to tie all the percussion together and kind of give it all a more even like feel like this while also adding some punch and yeah that is gonna be it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed as always make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments let me know if you want to see me do more future garage i used to do a lot of these on here but i haven't done one in a while so i'm coming back strong with this one so definitely let me know if you want to see more like i said you can get the full project files samples midi presets everything like that from this video is available at the top of the description and that's another thing if you want to see more of these types of videos definitely go pick that up it's just five dollars and you get all this stuff so you can make your own track and it also supports me a lot. So yeah, thank you so much everybody for all the support lately and I will see you tomorrow with another video.